watching Okay, so I'm going to post a couple questions for you guys. And the big idea behind it is the way I kind of get started. I'll post that question, and you need to be able, you're going to answer it, and then call somebody else to answer that same question. Okay? So the sooner you go, the better it is. Okay. So the question I'm going to pose, start, is what is government? What is government? Who can tell me? Jesse. A system created by a bunch of people to help themselves. Okay. Good answer. Pick up somebody else now, Jesse. How much? Yes. Um, the system that's created to help uh, countries with protection and, uh, and rights for the people. And like that. So, it provides protections? Yeah, for protections? Rights for the people? Okay. Pick somebody. Um, if you don't know their name, just ask them their name. Um, Bro. Uh, system that protects everything. So a system that just protects everything? Oh, I keep everything in order. So. Okay, so keep order. Okay. So that is what is government. What is good government then? What is America? Expand. Why? Why do you say that? Why? Why do you say that? The reason I say it is because not only is the voting system not really inclusive to everyone's opinion, but being some gerrymandering, it also gets rid of potential candidates. Oh, Jeremy Curb on that. With the two major parties. Yes. It's kind of like. It's like, what's your favorite ice cream? Except you can only have vanilla or chocolate. <laughs> That's that is nuts, right? right? Yeah. So you, you're saying good government is not determined on bipartisanship, that it, that it should be open candidates. Yeah, it should be open candidates with, like, they say like any group can be represented, but then actually back that up. Okay. So it's just the two parties. Okay, so, so we have people that that they they're trustees they, they you know they're, they're not politicos they're not really worried about the party but they worried about their constituents i like that okay go Just full representation of the entire public full representation yeah okay so full representation so how would you do that how would you do that with the united states i think we're at like 30 million other than the us i don't know 34 million how would you do that true representation of 34 million people well, it really boils down to inclusivity. If you're, if you go and vote for a political candidate that you believe in and support and values your morals, okay, that's you're, you're representing yourself within the government because we really are the government. It's not about this separate group of people controlling us. As long as everybody has a say in what goes into it, we shape it to be the most good for the most amount of people. Oh, absolutely. We we take something and we shape it for the greater good for the most people. So everybody agrees that segregation is good. Should have segregation, right? Yeah. Based on that concept. <laughs> until, they, until they don't. Shouldn't we protect the minorities? Go. Well, I would say government. It's like a minimalist government. Okay, that, minimalist? That like protects your rights, like our fundamental rights, and you know, like it's good for consolidation of power so you can actually get something done. But it shouldn't like be a burden in your everyday life to where like everything is regulated or um... so deregulation. Yeah. We should have a type of government that stays the heck out of our life. We don't want you. Okay? But people kind of do what they want to do. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Sam and then I think good government needs to be there to regulate and get involved when people are doing harm or when people Protect the minorities, correct? Yeah. We um, need, okay, good, go. 
Yeah, that, that's basically it. Good. We need government there to get involved to protect the minorities. I like that. Go. I think a system which isn't super Machiavellian is important just because I mean, Chase asserted that if everybody agrees, it must be right. But the thing is, there's never going to be everybody, and there's always going to be a minority. Yes. And so I think that understanding that sometimes the good of the many isn't necessarily perfect for everybody is really important. And I think the way to avoid that is to sort of try to streamline progress, because in America, we tend to move at a very glacial pace. And I think, like, I mean, look how long it's like institutional racism has taken to kind of be worked on. I think that, like, Focusing on actual progress is instead of personal gain is pretty important. I love that. I love that. All of these are great answers. And all of these ideas, things that you have said, these are all things that Madison, when drafting the Constitution, he was thinking about. During the Constitutional Convention, he thought about this. After the Constitutional Convention, during the ratification process, the idea of rights was a big topic. Two papers were written, Fed 10 and Fed 51. Both of these papers outline one key idea, factions. Big F word, well, the second big F word, the government. Factions. Factions is a group of people, the broad definition, is a group of people with a common idea. Okay? A common purpose. And they become so powerful that they kind of limit the ideas of the people that aren't part of it. So I'll give you an example. Democratic Republican. <coughs> Those could be factions. What about interest groups? NRA. Planned Parenthood. Could these be factions? Mm -hmm. Essentially. They want their ideas to be passed. Madison warned in Fed 10 and 51 about the power of factions. They care about the majority rights. And I spell terribly just so you're all aware. And they do not care about the minorities. The idea of good government has been a constant debate. Even today, right? When it comes to regulation, should we deregulate? Should we regulate more? What's the problem with overregulation? What's the problem with deregulation? It's a common disagreement. Okay? But I think good government is defined, defined by one key idea popular self. What is popular sentiment? If I'm recalling from Davis correctly, it's essentially allowing various groups of people to determine, uh, at least within the realm of reason, how certain laws would apply to their communities, or at least whether or not to enact uh, certain laws within their specific locales. Yes. Okay. Popular sovereignty is the idea that it is the will of people. And it uses another key idea. This key idea was kind of outlined in the video, and that was social contract. Social contract is the concept of an exchange of rights for protections. It's an exchange. Tell me how this exchange works. Rights for protections. What is a right? What is one right that we have in the United States? Freedom of speech. Okay, so we have freedom of speech. Two years. Fun fact, freedom of speech is not a civil right, it's a civil liberty. But, it's a good content. So, good way to remember it, first ten amendments, the Bill of Rights. They call the Bill of Rights, they're actually Bill of Liberties. The Bill of Rights sounds bad. 
Okay, a basic human right would be go to school. Okay. Right of life, lit. The life of liberty, being able to believe what you want to believe. And the life, and the right to property. Life, liberty, and property. This is a very American, or sorry, not American, this is a very American democracy idea. Life, liberty, and property. And this idea, Madison actually stole. You know who he stole from? John Locke. John Locke. He stole this idea from one of our key philosophers, John Locke. Who is John Locke? He was an English philosopher. He was a really smart person. Pretty much came up with the entire political, like, political ideology that is America, essentially. Yes. yes. He came up with this idea of life living proper. Does this kind of sound like someone else kind of stole it too? Who else stole this idea? Jefferson, where? Uh, Independence. The first two drafts of the Declaration of Independence included this term, life, liberty, and property. Why did the third draft and the final draft change to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Why? Huh? Copyright? <laughs> no, not copyright. There was no copyright on the Why did it change? Close. I got it. So close. We'll go here and then here. Oh, you're so close. Was it because of the slavery? Slavery was considered proper. Even during the drafting of the Declaration of Independence, slavery was a key idea. This idea of factions. Why do I say factions? When it comes to property and slavery. Why? Okay, I like that. It's like the South was a whole faction that was yes! power. Yes, because there was a pro-slavery, which was a majority at the time, and there was an anti-slavery, which was a minority. And Madison knew this when drafting the US Constitution, and he wrote about it in Fed 10 and 51. He wrote about this idea that factions become so powerful that they become uncontrolled. Slavery had become so powerful that they had to find a way to control it. During the Constitutional Convention, we had the three-fifths compliments. Was that a real control? No, it was a joke. It was a joke. It was not control. But it was a way to start that control of the faction. Because the pro-slavery idea was a faction. This idea of social contract, the rights or protections, it's an exchange. Do I have the right to go take anything from anybody? No. Why? It's a free, free country. We live in America. It's a free country. Yeah, free to get your bank. Free to what? <laughs> <laughs> OK, I didn't get that, but we're, we're rolling. Uh, can I go out and murder whoever I want to? You can, you shouldn't. Yes, you're infringing on somebody else's rights. You mentioned freedom of speech. Yes. Right? Freedom of speech. If you publish something that is not true, are you infringing on somebody else's rights? No. Life, liberty, and property? Yes, you are. That is called libel. So there's precautions. This social contract, you have that right or liberty to publish anything you want to publish. You get the protection that maybe 
you'll get protected in the ones you say. But in reality, can you be prosecuted for life? Yes. You have the freedom to do what you want and say what you want, but there's always a consequence. You go here and then brought here then on on those who want like negative rights. You could say negative rights if like they're protecting other people, but you don't have like the right to something. Yeah. It's like well, nothing's being given but you have your own like that makes sense. Individual rights. I like that. that that's a good concept. I don't oh, someone had their hand up. Maybe not. But yes. We have these freedoms. We have the right or liberty, freedom of speech. The consequence is we may have protections. That's why I kind of put this little sign into it, because it could be equal to protections, or it could be possible. Did you guys walk out of school right now? Yes. Could you be expelled? Yes. Yes. Could you be expelled? Will you be expelled? Maybe or maybe not. Can you protest? Yes. Can you be arrested? Yes. yes. Do you have that right to petition? Yes. yes. What happens is that consequence. Social contract is that exchange of rights for protections. Sometimes that exchange doesn't go well. And sometimes there's hiccups. I will tell you something that was in the news a couple weeks ago that has been bugging me. Bugging me. There's been riots down in, in Salt Lake, correct? Salt Lake City. Yep. Okay? And these riots are fueled by a campaign towards political pressure for the minorities, correct? Yes. We're trying to overthrow that faction, that idea that Madison wrote about that time. That social unrest. Do those people have that right to protest? Yes, yes they, they do. do. Do they have that right to commit violence? No. According to Jefferson, they will. Think about it this way. Where was Jefferson during the signing of the Constitution? Anybody know? That's what right. Who said France? What was he doing in France, Abby? He was ambassador of France. What was going on in France at that time? The French Revolution. The decapitation of diplomats. Jefferson was a... Dude, I love that. It's great. Jefferson was a firm believer in violence to overthrow the powerful government. A quote... A little bit of violence is good to overthrow a powerful government. It's from Jefferson. But his counterpart, Madison, Madison Jefferson were friends. They were really close friends. But Madison believed in peaceful protest, peaceful ideas, peaceful protest. And he wanted to make sure that it was clear in the U.S. Constitution. He wanted to make sure that it was crystal clear what was in the U.S. Constitution. You have the right the liberty, the freedom to petition, to assemble. And a lot of it was because, you know, the historical background behind it was because King George was so such a tyrant that anytime someone would start to do something, he, he would throw them in jail, and there was, you know, cruel and unusual punishment, they'd throw them on the crazy, who do bad things, nothing new. But the idea is still there, and it's still there today. Think about the 70s, 60s, 70s. March on Washington, led by Martin Luther King. Would he be in Madison or Jefferson? Madison. He believed in that peaceful protest. Even when they were violently being targeted by, by officials, he believed in that peaceful protest. What about Martin X? Jefferson, without a doubt. Is Martin Luther King as strong without Malcolm X, without his counterpart, without that violence? Would we understand the issues 
in society without a Malcolm X. To where Martin Luther King seems, not seems, or Martin Luther King becomes a figure. He wouldn't. Just like you won't have a Jefferson with a mask. There are two ends of peace and violence. Now, I'm not saying you condone or that you support the violence. You support Antifa. You support the alt-right. You don't do that. That's wrong. Because, like Jesse said, what are you doing when you do that? You're infringing on somebody else's rights. But you need that peaceful protest. And what's been bugging me for weeks, something that happened up in Congress that I know will be in a Supreme Court case. I know it will be in the Supreme Court. Anyone tell me what happened in Congress? Citizens wanted to protest in a neighborhood. What happened? They were all arrested. They were all arrested before they could. Were their rights infringed on? Yes. The comment from the city council, the mayor, we don't want what happened down in Salt Lake. Because they're using the ideas, the concept, the Malcolm X violence, putting it on Martin Luther King's. Does that make sense? That's where we have issues. Good government is defined by social contract and proper sovereignty. The will of the people or the rights for protections. The limiting of factions. The protection of the minority as well as the protection of the majority. In news today, we talk about getting rid of mail-in ballots. Who does that target? Someone said, the minority. Who's the minority in that, Abby? Higher age. When was the last time any of you sent a letter? You don't. Do you? Yeah. So I remember about two weeks ago. Good. Nice job. You're part of the minority. Oh, that's right. I don't know what happens. Because this idea, this philosophy is protecting the majority. It is targeting voters. And this isn't the very first time this has happened. Presidential elections do this all the time. I could go to every single election and tell you how this has happened. These laws are like this. Laws in America are like this. Where the top part is the increase of laws, and going down is the decrease. I read the fact that when you get in your car every day, you actually break. Every day, the average citizen breaks three laws a day. And they don't even know it. They break three laws every day when they get in the car. Okay? Right now, we're right here as a society. We have an increase in laws. Okay? Gun laws, prosecution laws. We have more laws right now. But through time, because this is really a timeline of era, just like the civil rights era, progressive era, it changes over time. We have more government regulation. We have less government regulation. Political parties have used this idea as their agenda. Who is the majority now? Who is the majority? We're seeing a flip. 
What is the majority in the United States? You guys are. You are the majority. Nice job. You're a minority majority. You are the majority because policy, laws, behavior, politics is now motivated towards your interests, your beliefs, your ideas. Gay marriage 20 years ago would have passed. No. What about abortion? In the past, with Roe v. Wade, I've looked at that case all summer long, and I was a firm believer that Roe v. Wade would never get overthrown. And then I really dove, dove in deep and realized Roe v. Wade was a teeter. It was like right here. And the reason it was right here is because the evidence they used to support their claim is contradictory. I'm not even a law professional. I can tell you that Roe v. Wade was weak. It wasn't until Casey versus Planned Parenthood that there was some solid evidence for abortion and the felony. Roe v. Wade is required to report this. Society changes based off of this deregulation and more regulation. It changes. It evolves. It becomes better. And it's that idea of what good government is. Madison had this belief. Jefferson had this belief. I'm going to ask another question. Should we repeal the death penalty? I will start us off. Gage? Why? Because the criminal it's things, all the terrible things and all that stuff that are Okay, so the crime that's punishment. Okay, now Gage, you're going to pick on somebody else in the class and they're going to answer that same question. How much is already lost? If you don't know their name, ask them their name. What's your name? Sam. Go for it. Okay. Um, I suppose I teeter on this issue somewhat. I can see arguments on both sides, however, I do think at least given my acquaintance with the topic, that capital punishment is justified in certain circumstances. I just view it to be, I guess, morally appropriate from an intuitive standpoint, and I think that's really all morality to be based upon. But of course, my opinion may change on that. Okay. Uh, we'll go with, what's your name? Yes. No. Uh, Milio. Um. I would say no, just because it's almost functioning as a safety net. Like, if you know that there's a possibility in the future that you could have reached the death penalty with crime, then it might inspire you to stay in the world. I like that. That's a great answer. Oh, that's right. That's me. What do you Um, the 
thing about the death penalty is, given how um, sort of feeble our justice system is, you genuinely sometimes you can't quite confirm that the person you are quite literally murdering is actually guilty of a crime because they, they made a movie about it and you think that it's a rare occurrence. But the frequency at which that happens, where an innocent man or woman is actually executed for a crime they did not commit, is astounding. There's an entire organization called the Innocence Project, which actually goes after that. So it's, and also, if you're just looking at it morally, let's say if there's somebody who committed double murder and they're on each death row, isn't killing them literally putting you at the very same level? Because if we have a right to life, liberty, and property by taking a life, you are at that same level of killing someone. Because it might be, it, it is premeditated, I mean, that's what it is. Like, it, you, there's a reason that you can't guarantee it from guilty, and also why would you want to kill someone? Because I think the suffering is really true. So you got two people with their hands up? Right. Oh. Uh, I'm in favor of people who don't have a fear. Now, the reason being is yes, when some people do die, you know, however, in my mind, who would? Like, either A, you have the death penalty. If not, they're in prison for life. So one option, they're killed. The other option, they sit in the cell, eat one meal a day, do nothing for 50 years. In my opinion, that is a far worse punishment than death. At least with death. It's not only economically, right? $30,000 a year. Keep somebody on death row. $30,000 a year. But then just like keeping them there for ages, that's horrible. That is just way too much punishment. And then with like, the whole murdering thing, like, does it infringe on you? Don't you kill another person? Well, just going with the number example, they kill two people. You only kill one. So there's that. <laughs> but then <laughs> even on top of that, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Well, even on top of that, once they have infringed on one of those main liberties, one of the main freedoms we are given, I don't know about you guys, but once someone has gotten rid of those, I honestly do not see the mission anymore. Because once they have committed murder, we have been murder. Once they have tried to take away someone's rights to do one of those main three properties, they are no longer like a member of society. They are no longer someone who can, in my mind, agree with the rules. In my mind, at that moment, they are not a man. They even branch on someone else's rights. Okay, back here, back here, back here, back here. I think false guiltiness is an entirely separate issue. Like it definitely happens, and there's definitely a certain form of the judicial system to deter against that. But having the death penalty in place deters against the overall murder in general. And you killing somebody on death row isn't committing murder yourself. They killed themselves by committing that crime. Because that's their punishment. Senator Bell? Yeah. You've got it. We'll pause this. We'll finish the next one. Uh, I'm going to watch the, I think we're supposed to watch the assembly. Mm -hmm. Okay, if someone comes in, then we got to switch buttons. But I think we're good. I think we're good. Um, can you repeat your comment? I didn't hear it. I loved it, yeah. but I didn't hear Sorry. it. Sorry. So, well, I think I just said that, like, false guiltiness is a completely different thing. Like, that's definitely an issue. But I don't think that should impact our decision whether or not to have the death penalty in place because having that death penalty and knowing that yeah, you can die because of your actions definitely deters against the overall general murder. It's a categorical imperative we all agree on, okay. and that deters against what you can actually do. But you killing somebody on death row, that's not you murdering them. They, they killed themselves because of their actions. That's a very good point. Yeah. Okay, pick somebody else with lots of hands. Well, I was just going to say, basically, what he just said, if you imprint yourself uh, against somebody's rights, the government should have the ability to infringe your rights. So the death penalty should stay in my opinion. So you're saying those protections should be able to overrule your rights? If so, go backwards in social contract. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, 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 I'm not saying it's wrong. I, mean, I, I love that, that point of view. That's great. Too. Okay. Next um. I think to put the falsely accused, like those hand in hand with the death penalty, maybe you can't like, um, dismiss that issue because I looked it up, I don't know how correct it is, but it said like 
four percent around we think um and they don't have exactly taken but would have been exonerated if they hadn't been killed by the death penalty and i think that's a number that you can't really turn away from um and and the fact that people even if it doesn't happen often to be killed even though they're innocent is enough that i think we should know. i like that okay. we're gonna have two more comments if that's okay Sam, oh. um, um, I don't think that humanity should go eye for an eye for the infringement of rights. As you say this with an always kind, always be kind. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, I think that our society should be able to evolve past the eye for an eye mentality of if you do this, you get this back. And I mean, sometimes in my head, I'm like, yeah, that was really kind of messed up. It would be messed up to happen to you. But it's not something that the government has to say because we promise these people these rights. We don't get to take away their eye. Like, and the death penalty, honestly, I kind of agree with Abby. Like, it kind of does go case by case. Like, but human life should be valued more than someone's, just more than the capital and their crime because there's still human life. And even if someone does commit a crime, we learn from their experience and we learn from them as a person and we learn how our society should evolve past it to not have those crimes happen again. So, just shouldn't go either. Last comment. I agree with you. It's that government ideally should be a sign of moral correctness. Because if we follow a government, they should be a moral beacon. So, like it or not, you it is an infringement on somebody else's rights if you are killed. Like you may, they may have killed themselves, but you are delivering the action that leads to their death. And if we're even just take out the innocence project thing, don't you think that a good deterrent to crime would be spending the rest of your life in prison? Frankly, I would think that a lot of people would agree with you that death is actually more merciful. But I think if somebody commits a double murder, they probably don't deserve that much mercy. And really, despite like the economic ramifications of it, it's probably better to keep them incarcerated. Okay. How many of you guys have jobs? I'm not paid, but... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have an internship. Yeah, essentially. Okay, you have a job. You get paid. You get that tax out every month. What if all of a sudden you have to pay $200 out of every check for somebody that's in prison? Would your opinions change? Would your ideas change when it comes to the death? It would be hard. It would be hard pressed. Let me give you a number. Ninety percent. What does ninety percent mean? All the time. The majority of whatever that number is. I know you're going to be quick. Ninety percent is the average conviction. If you are a district attorney and you are not at 90% nationwide, you will not get reelected. Your conviction rate needs to be above 90% to be a phenomenal district attorney. So that means 90% of all cases that you prosecute have to have a conviction. Otherwise, you're going to lose your job. Does that seem like a problem? Yeah. Yes. Why? Because, listen. Uh, there's going to be alternative motives to even convict the wrong person or speak through something that might actually. They're not going to have an honest case because they have their own personal motives. Take a 16 year old African American that has grown up in poverty. He gets charged with a murder case that he didn't even commit. The prosecuting attorney comes in and says, you are going to get the death penalty. You are going to serve your entire life in jail. Do you think his mind can process all that information? What is he going to do? Take a plea. I'll take 15 years. Because life in prison compared to 15 years in prison is a big difference, right? That minority 
because of social unrest, because of the things that are going on in this country right now. This racial stigma has created this idea that 90% is okay. But in reality, it's not fair to the defense. Comments. How do we change this? How do we change this idea? 90%. Maybe don't rely on district attorneys to have that number. Like maybe take more time in trying to figure out a case because there is probably if it's a murder, there's a side that did it and a side that didn't, and we have to take more time to decide which side actually did it. Okay, like that. I feel like it's more of an issue of what you're bringing to court rather than what you're prosecuting. Because if it's in court, like obviously the DA wants to win that case. He's not trying to lose. Like they should be like 90 or even like 100% in his eyes. It should be like, what are we bringing to court? Because like if you bring something to court and you don't plan on convicting them, then nothing like close to the point. Like that's what you're in court to do from their side and the defense is there to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I feel like it's kind of like harder to like bring it down to like less than ninety. Because it's kind of like bring it down to less than ninety, like lower, like the losses that might be like even worse because it's not like as much money. Um, I think like you're saying like having You use a great word there, education. Who broadcasts court cases? Court TV, man. It's the coolest thing ever, right? You get an inside look at this murder and how he killed these people. And then it's published all in every newspaper in the United States. The very first televised murder case. Does anybody even know who the case this was? It was Ted Bundy. <laughs> Ted Bundy lost that case. He could have won it. He could have won it based off of the current laws because we were right there when it comes to deregulation. He could have won it because he was a lawyer and he knew how to work the system. He knew that if he murdered someone in Utah and took him across state lines to Arizona and buried the body, and he found the body and got the evidence in Arizona, can Utah actually prosecute? At that time, they couldn't. The TV made it sound like, man, this guy's a terrible murderer. We need to put him away. We need to give him the death penalty. We need to do these things. Now, I'm not saying Ted Bunny's wrong. Or, Right, in any sense, because he wasn't. <laughs> nice save, <day>, but <laughs> He was a terrible, terrible, terrible person and committed atrocities. <laughs> but what I'm saying is good government, laws, prosecution, it all plays into part. We have a new branch of government that started in the last 10 years. Does anybody know what this branch is? You guys all have access it, access to it. Media. Media now becomes the new fourth branch of government. They are a faction. Am I wrong? By definition, are they a majority of people that are trying to push an ideology? Yes. Can they be persuaded? Yes or no? Yes. When it comes to someone going to court, are they going to pack this number? Influence society, influence this idea that you are guilty. Yes. The problem with the rise of the people are innocent. 
then we look at this idea of rights for protections. Do we truly have a social Any questions? Final thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to wipe off your Chromebooks. Start by rows going through. 